post. I try to tell my kids that we, this is the way I think we live life. We're on a line. There's a line that we, we should follow. That's the perfect line. But we're going to go yeah. off and on that. And some things are going to be really good on this side. And the other things are going to be really bad. And you're going to fuck up a lot. And I hope you do. Yeah. I hope yeah, you make yeah. a lot of mistakes. And I've made a lot of them. So whatever ones you make, just bring them to me, man. We'll try to figure them out. I might get real pissed at some of them. But we're going to figure them out, man. Like my little guy recently, like he'll bring, he'll bring problems to me. And sometimes I like, I don't really know how to answer them. Right. But the older I get and I find cannabis helps when I'm high, I slow down a bit, man. And I can kind of see it from his perspective. It almost brings this adolescent mind out of you to like slow down everything. And that's why I enjoy it because like I'm a hothead and I'm not when I'm on cannabis. When I smoke cannabis, I'm chill. My kids even take advantage of it. Like they're like, they'll know, like, let's go throw the football. Let's play soccer. Let's play Frisbee. Dad's high. Let's get in here and get this going. Your kids, obviously they know what you do with cannabis, right? But do you smoke around them? Do they know you smoke it? How are you treating it? Cause I'm curious as a parent. Yeah. So I have, I have six, I have six kids and they range in, and they range in age. Okay. So my, my oldest is 23. Um, I have a son who's 20 and I have a son who's 19. Okay. And so my 19, 20 year old son, so, you know, they're about the age where they get 15, 16, 17 and started consuming themselves. And, and you know, their, their mothers were like, not a good idea, but what could she say? Right. Pop, Pop was like world famous for this. And so I had a real conversation, you know, I said, here's my, I said, you guys are going to do what you're going to do. And I know there's probably even more pressure to do it because of who your dad is. So I said, but I'm going to tell you the way I look at it, right? For me, it's about using this to make your life better. You know? And I said, if I come in and you're smoking and you can't have a conversation with me because you're, you're too high, then I'm going to have a problem with that. If I come in and you're smoking, I'm expecting us to have a really deep, philosophical and profound conversation because that's the way I look at it. And so I said, if I see you using it in ways that make me feel good, I'm, you're not going to have any problems with me. But if I see you using it in ways that don't make me feel good, then you're probably going to have some issues, right? That's a cool way to look at it, man. I mean, it kind of keeps it open for them to try it and experience as, as kids. Because, I mean, they're going to try it all, right? I mean, yeah. I tried it all. You probably tried it all. Uh, but yeah. realistically, I mean, I wish I didn't need it or I didn't want it, but I... Glad I found it, man. Like smoking but say, wait, and Even this it. idea of like, I, but I, I want to challenge this. I wish I didn't need it or want it, right? Do you say that about food? I mean, the smoking portion of it. Like, I wish but, I could but eat even it. Still, even still, right? Like this, I, I understand we come from like the whole tobacco realm and the idea that smoking is 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 bad for us. Yeah. Okay. okay. The reality is anything anything that we do in excess is going to be bad for us. And even the idea of excess, that requires, right? Some people can do a, can handle a lot more than others. And so for me, the, the only thing, like I think one of the ways to get rid of so much of our worry and our anxi and anxiety is just pay attention, okay? Right? If you're paying attention, you can tell, you can feel, maybe I'm smoking too much and I should like smoke a little bit less because it's heavy on, my lungs are not able to handle it. And also realizing if you pay attention, certain times of the year, the lungs can handle, right? When it's when it's moist and there's more precipitation, the lungs have more support in handling the drying effect of the smoke. But if it's really hot and dry and you're noticing my throat is dry, then yeah, maybe chill out on, on the smoking a little bit. But it's just about paying attention. It's not about being afraid of what's going to happen. Yeah, I guess I just, uh, just concerned with the smoking, right? Because I never, my mom smoked my whole life cigarettes, right? And like... I stayed away from it because it was, I just was brought up that it was so bad for you. And anyway, so then when I started, I didn't start smoking until I was in about grade 12 and then I stopped. And then when I was like, maybe like 25, I started back up 26 and then I've been smoking ever since. Now I smoke on a daily basis. As soon as yeah. I'm done work, I come home and I puff. So what yeah. I mean is like, I could probably be healthier, but you know what? Maybe I just need to impact other things in my life and, more exercise, better eating, and things like yeah. that. Yeah, because there you go. because personally, I mean, the cannabis is allowing me to do things that I've never done before, like like yeah. these shows, like just making video content, having fun with my kids. So that's a cool way to look at it. That's that's a cool, well, challenging well, fact. What do you think is is too much? Like, well, I think it's again. I think that the to me, if you're looking for too much, <laughs> right? It, it shouldn't be. If it's too much, it shouldn't be hard to. 
It shouldn't be hard to recognize. I see okay? what you're, you're saying. You'll, you'll, you'll see a lot of you'll see a lot of signs that say it's that's telling you it's too much. That's why I think if people just pay attention, right? Just pay attention. The universe is always giving us signs, right? And if we just pay attention, we'll know we'll know it's too much. You know, there's something else I wanted to say. Um, uh, you know, like. I think this I I like the idea of thinking of instead of like what do I have to like get rid of or take out of my life, I think of more what can I add to my life. Because if I add things that feel good, the things that don't feel good, they tend not to be as interesting to me. But if I'm always looking for what I have to change and stop and right, then I'm always beating myself up and judging myself. Cool, cool look, man. That's a cool look. Because honestly, I mean, a lot of us that are consuming this plant are guilty of overconsumption and using it to a point where we're trying to get away from something or uh, we're, we're not healthy mentally and we're, we're overusing it. So I'm sure there's some people in the chat that are really motivated by that because it's so cool. Bring some other things in. Those other things will drift away. It brings things exactly. in that you love. Exactly. Yeah. It's almost because like you've got a certain size basket and when you keep putting good fucking things in there, the bad ones are going to disappear, guys. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. And, and, you know, because I think about like when I was playing football is is in the positive side. Right. I was consuming cannabis because it helped me deal with the things and playing football. But it helped me deal with it in a way that kept me in a in a, an abusive situation. OK. Right. And so I was in a sense I was using it to escape the reality of this isn't good for me. <laughs> right. And then when I actually got the message and walked away from football and started to gravitate towards things like spirituality, astrology, yoga, meditation, healing that were good for me, then I wasn't using cannabis to escape something. I was using it to broaden my mind and my perspective and help me further engage and be present with the things that I was interested in and the things that were for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, awesome. And I, and I think of in a, in a broader sense, the idea of medicine. Okay, medicinal cannabis, right? And and maybe this is a fantasy, but I think, you know, we, we only need medicine when we're sick. Okay. <laughs> and typically sickness comes from uh, a disharmony between our internal environment and our external environment. Okay. And I think of the like the 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 epidemic, okay, in, in the world right now is what I call materialism. You know, and I don't mean like we're attached to things. It's I mean, people think that, you know, based on the scientific perspective, that when we, we're here and then when we die, everything ends, everything disappears. OK, and that we're just machines and that there's no real meaning in life. OK, that's a sickness. <laughs> that's a sickness. And one of the things when people start consuming cannabis, right, they start to have experiences that might feel weird. Right. They might be imaginative but they connect us to something that's real and meaningful and vibrant. And even though we don't always understand it, we can feel it. And that's why we keep going back to it. Right. And so it's treating something, right. But part of treating something was you take your medicine, but you also have to do something, right. You have to change the, the thinking. And so a big part of my message is because a lot of people will smoke and they'll have high thoughts, but when they come back down, they'll be too afraid to share these ideas. And if you're, if you're too afraid to share your ideas, the chances of actually seeing if, if they check out or if we can make them real in the world, it doesn't, it can't happen. And so my, my whole thing is like, yeah, sometimes you're going to have ideas that are ahead of their time or don't make sense, but you're, there's going to be some gems in there. And if you can share them, like there's a vision for your life that you can step into, right? And just, and so we're, we're creating community where people are, are, they're not afraid to share the deeper, like inner things that are going on because we, right. We, that's what makes life worth living. Yeah, it is, man. It's different levels of conversations, man. Everyone has these layers, right? Like you get this cannabis yeah. is going to give you this, right? Yes. And yeah. so much more and open up all these layers. It's so true, man. Like I, I've got a smoke room down here in the studio. So we spend a lot of time down here and I, I do find like my, me and my wife's Rachel's, conversations are so much better when we're when we're on cannabis when, when we're high and yeah. when i mean my high is i feel like we're more level hit hey, we, we connect better right we talk about more of the same things and we kind of see each other's side of it i don't know what it does i wish i knew more what it did inside my mind but for me man it's just been a game yeah. changer right it, and it's continued this conversation is making me even think of more different things i'm glad i yes. consumed during the conversation because it's making you look at it a different aspect do you because do you, 
Well, even this idea of medicine, like I think it's it's medicine for this time and place. But if the medicine works, the way we raise our kids and the way we treat our kids, they don't need it, right? Because they're already innately connected. But for us, it's the opposite. We were innately disconnected because of the world we grew up in. And so that's the way I think of why we need this medicine. But But again, if it's just taking medicine to numb, it's not actually what it's for. It's to help us like heal so that what we pass down to our kids is not the broken view of the world and ourselves that we inherited from from our parents and our culture interesting that's a cool spin on it man that's it that's really interesting aspect does your wife 